Right, so this question, what's the derivative of log x? We are going to prove this in a similar way to how we proved it with e to the x, but this one is much quicker, which is a relief. Um, so you're going to, uh, like, don't blink or you'll miss it, okay? It's like three lines, maybe, coming into the website. Okay, so... As so often happens, what we'll do is we'll start with some existing knowledge and then we will move to the part that we want, right? So if I said y equals e to the x, then I know the derivative of this is just e to the x. That's simple, right? So far, so good, okay? However, I'm going to do something a little bit weird here. <laughs> I'm going to take this guy, and one of the reasons why we write it as a fraction is to remind you of the fact that it came from rise over run. And it really is, in almost all the contexts, contexts you're interested in, you can treat it just like a normal fraction. Like, you know, in chain rule, like things cancel, right? So I'm going to do something to this that I do with normal fractions, which is I'm going to take the reciprocal. Now, why would I do this? I just want you to think for a moment. Remember we talked about the fact that exponentials and logs are just the same object looked at from different points of view, okay? Now I want you to compare this derivative with this derivative. What does this mean? Um, this is rise over run, yeah? Change in y compared to change in x. So this is dy over dx. You're differentiating y with respect to x. That's what that means, okay? Now have a look at this. Because this is not just any fraction, this is a special, like there's limits and all that kind of weird stuff baked into this, right? This doesn't just mean the reciprocal of what you started with. This means you are differentiating x with respect to y. Do you see that? Like it's asking a whole different question from the other angle, just like we're trying to think about with exponentials and logs, okay? Because this thing is a derivative with respect to y, it's a little bit weird to write the right-hand side with respect to x, like it's meant to be with respect to y. Thankfully, I can write the right-hand side in terms of y really easily. Think back to when you were doing um, volumes, and you had to change back and forth between x and y. Have a look at the board. There's not that much written here to help you. What else could you say? What is e to the x in this context? Y. It's just y. Like that's literally the first thing I wrote down, right? So it's 1 over y. Is that okay? So if y equals e to the x, that's what I started with, I get to this. I get to that. Hmm. The part of your brain that I'm trying to flex right now is the part that looks at an object and is able to change perspective on it. Okay? This is quite hard. So I'm going to give you a bit more of a nudge in the right direction. This object here, I can look at it from the opposite perspective by translating it from an exponential into a log, right? Same equation, but just looked at from the other way. So how would I rewrite this if it wasn't an exponential, but a log function? What would become the subject of the equation? Have a look. What's operating here? The subject is currently y, right? If I look at it from the opposite perspective, the subject should become x. Isn't that right? Like I'm doing the same thing over here, then I'm trying to switch around, right? What's x going to be equal to? Well, it's going to be a log base e, which I have a lazier, quicker way to write, okay? And that's why this is going to be where y appears. This is the switch in perspective, okay? So if y equals e to the x, this weird thing is what I get. But y equals e to the x and x equals log of y are the same thing. These are one object, right? So therefore, the same derivative statement should be true for both. Is that okay? All right, now, remember I told you, blink and you'll miss it. Have a look at this. We're going to do the final switcheroo to really change perspective, okay? X's and Y's, X's and Y's. I'm going to swap everything. Every X I'm going to replace with a Y, and every Y I'm going to replace with an X. Okay, they're just labels, right? I mean, if I wanted to, I could change them for U's, or I could change them for T's, or I could change them for Eric's, or it's just a label, okay? So let's do this. On the left-hand side, I'm going to get, instead of x log y, I'm going to get y equals log x. Is that okay? Swap's done, no big deal. Have a look at the right-hand side. What am I going to get instead for this derivative? It won't be dx on dy, it'll be dy on dx. And the right-hand side will just be 
one and x. Hey presto, done, that's the derivative. Okay? So just like with exponentials, where the derivative is really nice and simple, the derivative of logs are also nice and simple. And this is really cool because it solves some mysteries for us. Um, a mystery which I don't know how many of you spotted before. We've got a derivative statement here, gives us an integral statement. Let's take this derivative statement and get an integral statement out of it. What integral am I going to write? The integral of 1 over x, the thing that I ended up with, with respect to x, should send me back to where I began, right? Which is log x with, of course, one difference, namely, it's off by a constant, because it could be any of those, right? OK, now just look at this left-hand side. Look at this left-hand side, 1 over x. This, this is like something you've seen before. You've seen lots of integrals that look like this, and you would instinctively rewrite it not as a fraction, but as something with a, an index, right? Because we're good at dealing with indices with integration, right? So this is x to the power of negative 1. Now, this is the same thing. This hasn't changed. Now, do you remember, we learnt a rule for dealing with integrating things to, to a power, right? x to the power. Um, you would say, the integral of x to the n is what? What do we, we, we're so good at this now. What do we do to the power? We add one and then we divide by our new power and then don't forget the constant, right? Now, your exercises should have very carefully dodged, if I did a good job, um, this kind of question because look at what happens when you apply this rule to this. What happens to the power? It becomes zero, and then you're supposed to divide by that new power, and you're like, uh-oh, I broke maths, <laughs> right? Well, the reason why that rule doesn't apply here is because it's a whole different object that you're supposed to land on, right? So that's why we just kind of artfully avoided that, because we, ha we were waiting until now, okay?